Hello everybody, welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you are new to our page, my name is Sabrina and I share this account with my husband Andrew who's working behind the camera. And if you follow us on shorts or watch any of our vertical content, you might have seen that we recently built a fence. This is 260 feet of fencing that Andrew and I did over the course of three days. I shared the video and got so many questions from you guys about a cost breakdown and how to do it and just everything you want to know. And today is actually the perfect time to share that information because we are working on building a gate at the top of our property over here. We're going to close it in. We have dogs and it's just, you know, for safety and privacy and things like that. So we have to build one more panel of fencing. So it is the perfect opportunity to give you guys a little tutorial and then we'll get into building the gate and then into a cost breakdown to hopefully help you guys if you're thinking of building a gate or a fence in the future. I hope you enjoy and we'll get right into it. There's two types of posts you can do, six by six or four by four. We went with six by six so that you can do a larger span between posts. So six by six, you can go a maximum of eight feet. Four by four, is it's only recommended to go six feet. There's really only four main parts that go in a fence. It's your post, which is six by six or four by four that we talked about, your rails, your top cap, and then your fence boards. If you're using six by six posts, you'll need three rails, which are two by four, for six feet, you can get away with doing two if you do five foot fence boards. It, with six by six, you need a two by six cap that sits on top. And then you could either do six foot or five foot uh, one by six fence boards. A situation like this, we hired out the post installation because there's so many, it's just so labor intensive. But if you're doing your own posts, I recommend running a string line and then marking them all out on the string line digging your holes because you want to make sure that they're all in line so your fence is straight. When you go to put your rails on, take a measurement at the bottom and the top. The measurement should be very close to the same if all your posts are plumb. We're doing a six foot high fence. So I'll usually mark my post down about three inches to the top of the two by four. That way I don't have to cut them all. And then from there, you'll measure your six feet and that's where your top and bottom rail will go. And then you just center the middle one. So our driveway has a pretty drastic slope, which you can kind of see now so if we were to keep all our panels level and flat on the top you would either be over a foot out of the ground here or you would have to be a foot lower here which would really only give you four and a half five feet here per panel because we can't exceed six feet so we opted to follow the grade where we could on the slope if it's just straight boards it looks kind of like a wall so we decided to trim it out top and bottom with a an extra fence board. There's also been a lot of questions about these lights. The link will be in the description, so if you want to check them out, you can see them there. The post caps, they're from Home Depot. We can also link those for you guys to check out. So we're gonna start this panel now. We just installed these posts for the gate. We dug down four feet by about 15 inch diameter, filled them with concrete. So we'll get our measurements. We'll install our rails and then the two by six on top and then all the fence boards should just butt up to them and screw in. So I've made my mark from the top down where I want the, the rail to sit on this side. So I'll put it in, check it with the level, mark the other side and screw it in. So if you need to just adjust it a little, if you tighten the screw, because you're toenailing it on an angle, it'll actually pull the piece up. I'll typically put a toenail screw in the bottom and then on the opposite side of where I'm putting the boards, just in case you ever have to take that panel out the screws won't be covered by the fence boards. You can hook your tape on the top of that rail to the bottom of the other rail would be six feet because that's the length of your boards. So if you take three and a half off, you can mark 68 and a half inches. That way you can see your mark and you can install your next board a lot easier. So again, we'll screw this side in on the line that we made. I should probably mention when I said you could space the post eight feet, that's the maximum space on center because your lumber comes in eight foot sections and then the next size is a 10 foot section. So if you space the post actually eight feet in between, typically you can't line them up perfect. So the most you'll go is from the center to the center of the next post, eight feet. That way your eight foot material, you'll just have to cut down a little bit and it all works out. And with that being said, you're not just going to measure eight foot centers. You'll measure the full distance and divide it up so you have equal size panels because if you just started on one side, you could end up with a small panel or half a panel. So it's best to get a measurement and actually divide the space. And 
There's your rails. The last piece you put on will be your two by six cap that goes on flat right on top of the two by four. Kind of just the style that we, we prefer. There's lots of different styles for fences. Ours are, they call it full privacy, which is boards tight together. You could do staggered on either side. You can not put the two by six on top and your boards run long up and it's just the rails. There's many different ways. But this is the way that we are doing ours. Typically the way I fasten this is I will put a toenail screw on either side of the two by six into the post and then a screw straight down into the two by four on either end. And I'll come to the middle and I'll just kind of eye it and make sure that this isn't bowed because if you just come along and screw it, this could be bowed in or out and then it won't have the same reveal. So you can also measure, measure your two ends, measure the middle, put it where it needs to be and screw it. We've reached this stage, now we're ready for boards. This is my time to shine. Um, Andrew's a carpenter and I am his willing apprentice. So if you have a laborer, somebody who can handle a drill and doesn't do much else, it's a good job for them. <laughs> Screws we're using for the boards and then to fasten the rails, we're using three inch. I'm gonna start on this side so the little rip piece ends up behind the gate. I'm taking my fence board and I'm butting them up tight to the post and then I'm gonna start screwing them in. Starting at the top corner. So it goes in nice and tight. And then I go down to the bottom. I do one in the bottom corner. And then back up again into the middle. And this is no good for my old knees. Once all three are in, I start staggering them. So then the second screw at the top is gonna be lower. This will prevent splitting. Same thing down below. I screwed it in lower and then again for the middle. Perfect. First one is in and then basically we just repeat that process and keep going until they're nice and tight. This is our last full board. Andrew's gonna make a cut for this skinny one that has to fill the gap. This is a good time to remind you guys that this is pressure treated lumber. We got a lot of questions about what kind of wood we use. It's pressure treated. So if I'm not mistaken, you're supposed to wait three months for it to dry out. This is wet wood. So once it dries, there's gonna be gaps that form just slightly as the wood dries. Um, so I think it's three months you have to wait before you stain it, but winter is coming for us. So we'll probably just wait and stain the fence next year. There's also been a lot of questions about leaving a gap for expansion, contraction. As Sabrina mentioned, this wood is soaking wet right now. It's been sitting in the store all banded up for quite some time. It will shrink. You're going to have gaps here, so it won't expand any more than it is right now. So you don't have, you don't have to worry about leaving a gap because if you left a gap, you would have a, a huge gap like after it dries out. We are going to be putting an extra fence board here to trim it out like the rest of the fence. I forgot to purchase them. Typical. We're not putting them on right now, but you could purchase eight foot boards and you just cut them down slightly to fit top and bottom if you so choose to do that. Okay, so when we put our gate on, we're gonna have it sit flush with the six by six because we're gonna have the hinges mounted, face mounted directly to both and it will swing open this way. So just to get our measurement for our gate, what I like to do is I'll take some scrap blocks, I'll flush it up and then I'll actually screw this in here temporarily. And now if you were to build your gate with that, that tight to the post, it would bind up and it wouldn't close and open properly. So I'm gonna tack this onto that piece as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna leave a slight gap, maybe a quarter inch. There's room for it to swing. So that's where the gate should sit when it's built and your hinge, as I said, will be screwed here and there. So we're gonna get the overall measurement of both our gates, 179 and a quarter inches. You also have to take into account a gap between the two in the center. 
So 179 inches, that's both gates, and then you have to subtract the gap in the middle. So when I build my gate, I'm gonna have it a total of six foot high by 89 wide. That leaves a half inch gap in the middle and the gap we already accounted for on either end. So six foot high, so the sides I'm gonna cut out at six feet. Freaking plain. My sides will need to be cut at six feet because that's the total height. So I have that marked and then you mark three and a half inches down, makes two square lines where you'll gain it out. We're using five foot fence boards. So I made a mark at five foot and then take off an extra three and a half. That section will be gained out as well. And then at the, from the bottom up, five and a half, same thing. So this is the gate kit that we bought. Uh, it comes with your hinges, your latch and a handle. It's also from Home Depot. We can link this in the description as well if you want the same one. Oh, you're getting good. So I'm just making sure that with this gap I have that the hinges will actually fit because if the screws were too close together, it wouldn't work. There's lots of room there for screws. It's not too close to the edge and same as here. There'll be lots of screws and this will be a full two by six down below and a two by four across the top where the hinge goes. So this is the first piece for the gate. I told you about the half lap that I'm doing. So I have to notch out the top rail, the middle rail and then the bottom two by six, as you can see. So all four uprights are gonna be notched like that. So I've got the one done. I'll trace the other three, so they're all identical. Remaining two by fours and two by sixes will get cut to the width of the gate. So just to give you kind of a idea of what it's gonna look like, I have two of these notched out already. All our fence boards going this way up to the top of this and then we're going to use the three quarter inch black baluster the metal that's going to go along the top there when we are ready to put it together i'm going to glue everything and screw it from the back side because this will be the front and i don't really want any fasteners yeah. shown on the front as you're gluing and screwing it together a good thing to do would be to check it for square so you'd measure from corner to corner and the numbers should be the same or if they're not the same, make them the same and that'll make sure your gate's square. Five feet to here, yeah, for the fence boards. And it should be six feet to the very top, which yeah, six feet. So these are the metal spindles that we're using for the top section of the gate. I've gone ahead and started cutting them to fit. It's eight and a half inches. I'm cutting them eight and a quarter to give them a little bit of room because they have to go inside connectors. Um, I'm gonna end up putting one above each fence board roughly so that's 18 per section I'll need about 36 of these cut And now we repeat the process again. This is the hinge kit that we bought from Home Depot and it came with the inch and a half lags which we're going to use to secure it to the post. I'm just going to flip it over so I can do this side. We're going to roll it just like this and then we're going to bring it to me. We're just going to set it down right there for now. We're using these lag bolts. They're like a structural alternative. Um, I think they'll hold the hinges in the post really well. So this is a spring-loaded caster that we also purchased from Home Depot. We're going to attach it to the bottom of both gates. And what I'm going to do, because it's a larger gate, before I screw it down, I'm going to push just so there's a little bit of tension. 
That way the gate's going to be closed the majority of the time. That way there will be something on this end holding it up in the air. From It'll keep it from sagging. Good morning. It's another day of working on our gate. Today we're going to put all the panels on and basically finish it off. So enjoy. Ooh. I forgot to tell you guys, this is the exact same design we built at our old house. We're literally just mimicking it because even years later, we still, it's okay. We still drive past and we're like, oh, what a beautiful gate. So it's the exact same design, exact same, like even components of it. I'm pretty sure probably the same things we bought a couple years ago. up a bit I can put the screw no no just if I put this screw lower that's pushing the screw down yeah, yeah so we're using inch and five eight screws and it'll be the nice side facing the road So now that we have all the boards on, we can start laying out where our, our metal spindles are gonna go. So I want one centered on each board. We have a small rip here, but you won't notice the difference. So I'm just gonna line the first one up centered here. So from each joint, they're five and a quarter. I measured two and five eighths, to, which will be the center. And I've made a mark on all of them. Now I'm just gonna transfer that mark to the piece that goes up here. Then we can attach all our connectors and then put it all together. So you want it in the center of the board this way. And I have my line for the spacing. Just like that. Your spindles will slide inside there. That's what holds it in. These are the spindles that I cut yesterday. I'm gonna start putting them inside the connectors and then we can put the two by four on top as well. Is if you keep yours up and then just slowly start lowering it and I'll do work on my way over. This is the latch kit that we're using. Um, it also came in the same kit as the hinges. Take another small one. I think that's perfect. And that'll hold like the tops together. And then we'll have the bolt in the bottom Yeah, that's right, that's right. This is the cane bolt that we purchased from Home Depot as well. So the idea is that you want to screw it onto your gate that's going to be fixed because we have, ours is two gates, but we only want one operational at a time. So to keep one still, use a cane bolt and the idea is once the gates are perfectly straight in line, you'll mark the ground and you drill a hole and then this slides up and down. That when you wanna open this gate, if you wanna drive a vehicle through, you just pull that up, spin it, and it latches on there like that. We ended up taking one of the casters off because our driveway has such a slope that even with the wheel, the spring becomes too tight before it's open and it's gonna cause problems.
Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope this information has been helpful for you. Now let's get into the juicy stuff. Here's how much everything cost. Starting with the fence, as a reminder, this was 260 feet of fencing. We covered the cost entirely and did all the labor ourselves. We hired a company for the installation of 27 posts at $55 Canadian a post, which totaled $14.85. For all the lumber and screws, the cost was $5,162. The post caps totaled $63.18, and for the additional trim to frame out each of the panels, the cost was $379.20. In total, the cost for the entire fence build was $7,089.38. Here's the cost breakdown for the gate. We used two 6x6x10 pressure treated posts at $104, two 2x6x8 cedar at $50.84, eight 2x4x8 cedar at $121.60, 32 1x6x5 cedar fence boards at $319.36, 10 30kg bags of all-purpose quickcrete at $63.80, 2 gate kits at $75.44, 2 cane bolts at $36.68, 1 spring-loaded caster at $29.87, 2 solar lanterns at $29.98, 1 baluster kit at $62.98, and 2 6x6 post caps at $4.80. The total price with tax for the entire gate build was $1,016.26. I hope this information is helpful for you, and if you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching!